A rising gold price is an, really an indication of a failing fiat currency. So yeah. it's all about inflation. And that's, that's the big experiment was regulating yeah. the speed and the rate of the inflation. So when you have interest rates, you're talking, I mean, great that they're positive because I can't guarantee this. Obviously it's beyond my control, but we're going, we're, there is no choice. I don't care what any central bankers say, oh, we don't want to do negative interest rates. The IMF had that policy paper in 2017. In 2015, they showed how they could basically get rid of cash bam, like that. And oh my goodness, hasn't that been happening? <laughs> right. And, and in that paper, what they said was that they wanted the retailers to introduce going cashless to the public. So, cause they like distance between their policy and the introduction of their policy. So nobody goes back to the central bank and say, well, you wanted us to go cashless. Well, it, it kind of depends on where we are right now, but I would say that even in the cities with what's happening with commercial real estate, it's way more expensive than it should be. So there's not one doubt in my mind, but we are somewhere at the top of the market with real estate. So as, as an investment, I think it's a really bad investment. But what I mean by offsetting it, you have real estate that's overvalued, you have gold that's severely undervalued, okay? And so buying it, you know, buying both of these, like, okay, I'm, I'm in the process of working on getting what I call a bug out house, which is a house where I can go because I'm right in the middle of the city. And it, when riots or when it gets nasty out there, I want a place where I can go with my family and feel safe and secure. So I could sell some gold and buy that house for cash, mm. or I could take a mortgage out. And as we were talking about, we know how low mortgage rates are, mm. keep my gold. And then when the reset occurs and gold expresses goes up to it's somewhere near its true value, sell a little teeny bit of it and pay that mortgage off with dollars that have no value. So therefore, no matter what it was that I paid for it, since I'm not paying any virtually any interest on it, I'm buying that house really, really cheap. If you think about anybody that was born 1933 or later, they were never on the gold standard. So I was born in 54. I was on a quasi gold standard, but it was really, you could think of it as the dollar standard. So if I didn't have my uncle Al, honestly, I don't know how much about this I would know, to be perfectly honest with you. So we have been taught, here's a, here's a quote, and it's, I didn't come up with this. I wish I had, but it's perfect. <clears throat> when a well-packaged web of lies has been sold gradually to the masses over time, yeah. the truth will seem outrageous and yeah. the speaker a raving lunatic. So, <laughs> right? So that is the normalcy bias. But additionally to that, and it's interesting because you were, you know, you were referring to the moves in both gold and silver in terms of that fiat government money, mm -hmm. right? In reality, it's been much bigger. So, but what they knew when they created this system, I mean, it is genius, is that people do not understand inflation. So what an Aussie dollar or US dollar or Swiss franc or any fiat money what that would buy in 1971 and how much of that that you needed to support a family of four on one income. Yes. What, what one person could do to support a family then, now, I mean, you're hand to mouth, you're paycheck to paycheck. That would have been a four, I, 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 was, I was a teenager and my parents weren't home and 
a man came up to the door. My father was a developer and he handed me 12 $1,000 bills. I'd never seen that much money in my life. I <laughs> had just gotten out of the shower. I wasn't even dressed. I was afraid to put it down to go get dressed. <laughs> so I sat on the sofa holding this $12,000 waiting for my father to get home. And as soon as he did, I handed it to him. Would you know, we don't even have thousand dollar bills anymore. No, no, no. Right. So, you know, that's really why people do not understand inflation. <laughs> that's how they've been able to get away with it for so long. It's that nominal confusion. And yet we all know that the $20 bill in your pocket today does not buy what it bought a year ago let alone five years ago, 10 years ago, 100 years ago. They use that with the stock market, right? So they see the stock, people see the stock market going up, 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 up. I mean, that's why, they're, that's why they have to manipulate it up. And it makes, the perception is that this is making money when the reality is it's supported by lots of new money being printed and that means that the money that, that you're working for, that we're all working for, is losing value as we're earning it. A rising gold price is an, really an indication of a failing fiat currency. So yeah. even at these price levels, <coughs> these are really way, gold and silver are both severely undervalued. And the real trend that I think everybody needs to be paying attention to is that purchasing power of the fiat currency, because yeah. that's underlying all of these trends, right? But with physical gold and silver, it goes back to its, fun well, actually all assets go back to their fundamental value. What is the most important function that that asset or instrument performs. And for gold, its job, which is done for 6,000 years, is to hold its value over time. So anything can be manipulated, but over time. And, you know, I'll also bring you back to something else that the whole world experienced back in March and April was that bifurcation between the spot price and the premiums you had to pay on the physical gold yeah. and silver, which was much more indicative of real demand and supply. And even though those premiums have come down a bit, they're still there because what people really need to understand, no matter where you're putting your wealth, if it's considered, if you want it to last or it's really an investment, you need to have something that has the broadest base of buyer. 